to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And we are back once again. It is Sunday mid-morning, Sunday afternoon, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And joining me again is Mr. Tarver and good, it's like it's like deja vu in here. Yeah, we're recording this time. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are supposed to let me do that. So for we started this, we were probably 15, 20 minutes in, looking at each other like, that. this is going good. I looked down, and we were not recording. Okay. So now, so now we're... There's nothing we're, to say. We're, what do you say? What have you been doing that's been Second Amendment related, sir? I've been doing hero things, man, because I'm a hero. You're a hero. Yes. I've been going to work. I've been mowing the lawn. Okay, that's... That's not hero thing. I've been, I've been shoveling gravel. I'm keeping America alive. alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching them how to. St- I'm teaching them how to stay alive if, okay. if they bother to sign up for anything. They better. They need to. So, uh, you know, I was, um, I was looking for. I was just poking around the internet the other day, and guess I've been lo- kind of looking for some ammo. I've got plenty of ammo, but I've started to do a new thing where. Um, you know, before I'm, I'm kind of a, just a nice guy, and I wanted people to enjoy the classes and stuff. So I wasn't handing out ammo, but if someone needed a, you know, 10, 15, 20 rounds for this or that, or to complete a class or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, here, you know, here's some ammo. We'll go, we'll, you know, we'll keep the class going a little bit. You know, you've already burned up 150 of yours or 200 of yours. You need some more because we're kind of in the groove. Here, don't worry about it. I got a box. Let's just use it. It's kind of a, you know, I write it off anyhow. It's just kind of like a business expense. Yeah, it's getting pricey now, though. It is. And so now I'm like, okay, so here's what a class costs. You bring your own ammo. If you don't bring your own own ammo, this is what I'm charging for 50 rounds. And you're going to at least pay for one box, whether you whether you use it, whether you shoot it all or not. Yeah, take it with you. Take yeah. What's left. So I... Uh, I know, man. Times are getting times are getting tough, but ammo is hard to find. It is. I was poking around. It's expensive too, man. It is. If it is, I've seen some re- some like four hundred dollars per thousand round stuff. Um, I I'm not going to. I saw it at almost a dollar a round for a little while. Oh, for a while, yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, divulge my my links, my ammo suppliers. But I I did find I did find a place that had quite a bit. And it was not this, it was not the nine millimeter that I was looking at was not out of stock. And I could get a thousand rounds bulk ammo and it, it was coming right around. It was like 23, 24 cents a round or something like that, okay. which isn't bad. Not bad. So it's about two, four, about two forty per thousand is where we were at. Uh, I kind of held off. I don't need it quite. I, I might regret that. I should have probably bought it. You never know. You never, you never it, can tell. It depends on, uh, you never know. You never know how long this is going to drag out. Uh, a lot of politicians and people in political power are determined to see this drag out. Oh, yeah. It's crazy times, man. Yeah, stupid times. Stupid. <laughs> crazy times. We do. I do a radio show on Fridays, and... <laughs> And uh, the host of the radio show has asked me, so, Todd, what what cool, interesting firearm have you shot this week? My Glock? My yeah. VP9? No, I'm not buying guns right now. Right. I'm kind of like, you know, kind of looking for that good ammo. I'm kind of holding my, you know what I'm saying? I'm not out. It's not out. It's not a time to be out having lots of fun. No, no, no. It's time to... It's time to get ready. To kind of to be to you know to be prepared. It's time to come take a class. It's time to take. It's time to get. If you don't have one, a firearm, get one. If you don't have ammo, get one. You've done waited too late. Get right. it now. Well, you know my class. Get you a class. Yeah, and my my classes and stuff fell off quite a bit, but I think with um, I don't know, it's stuff starting to loosen up a little bit as far as people getting tired of being locked down. They got their hush money. Yeah, I don't. I don't. You're like, yeah. My father-in-law. What's, just, what's up with that? My father. They don't. They heard about you. I guess so. I'm heard on it. the list. My um, but uh, they got their hush money and maybe they're wanting to spend it. But I, I've got a class coming up um this next Saturday on the sixth and it's I got thirty plus people in it. 
30 plus people for that permit class. I'm going to bring in a couple extra helpers. And because I've um, kind of expanded my range a little bit and done some changes to it, I can accommodate 15 shooters at one time. As long as I bring in extra help. Right. I have 15 shooters at one time. That's a... That's a lot of shooters. That's a lot of shooters. But if I bring in two extra people to help me, that's five per person, right? Right. And the way we do it is we just stick one person, you know, one in, this is your five. One person in the middle, this is your five. One person right here, this is my five. And you just kind of kind of keep an eye on everything, but you kind of just work back and forth in your five. And so it actually goes really, really quick. Okay. Really quick. You need to, like freaking come take one of my permit classes from me sometime okay i need to set one up just just holler man just show up no no charge you do the podcast i don't plan on leaving idaho uh, just come take the class i don't care if you get the permit i'll give you the paperwork okay just come take the class i got the regular per- i got the regular permit but i tell you what it may be time might be time to leave idaho might be time where are you gonna go i'm looking for freer grounds oh yes that's right we talked about this last. We talked about this last week. Well, no, no. You need to stay in Idaho. You just got to go somewhere else in Idaho. Where? I don't know. Somewhere up in the mountains. Need to call this governor. We do. We do. That's the next podcast. Okay. Don't jump ahead. All right. We're trying to see. We're trying to keep the two podcasts separate. <laughs> There's so much crazy stuff going on anymore. But uh, I don't know. Um, one of my favorite topics that we haven't talked about for a long time is my undying hate for the NRA. Okay. The NRA. So an article came out. Now, this is from, and I, I didn't trust me. It's not something I listen to or read from on a, on, a, uh, on a continued basis at all. I just ran across this. It's not something I check out every day. But this is from <clears throat> NPR. Okay. So I'm a kind of ashamed that it came from NPR. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, a secret recording reveals NRA's legal troubles have cost the organization $100 million. $100 million. So we, were, we harped on the NRA. They're spending money. They're buying Wayne LaPierre freaking suits and, you know, $100,000 in the clothes store and vacations and two homes and everything else. And they were funneling money to their buddies who were part of the advertising firm that worked for them. And, you know, we went over all that. Multiple times. You remember Silent all that? Silent through the whole Virginia fiasco. Yeah. Didn't say a freaking word. Disgrace. Nothing until it was almost over. And then they said, we're ready to compromise. Yeah. And we're ready to cut a deal. I'm like, <laughs> nobody wants compromise. Well, <clears throat> it almost makes you think that they are just sitting there as a group that's willing to sell us out repeatedly over and over again. But calm the masses on the right, the gun owners, and say this is the best we can do. It's almost like they're getting donations from, I don't know, the Soros and stuff. Yeah, well, I think. Because yeah, that, that actually, that's all they ever do is compromise. And that that's what the, that's kind of what it came out in the end is some of the people that they were they were getting money from them were the left. Yeah. I mean, we, I Bloomberg. can't, I don't have that. Yeah, Bloomberg and some other names I don't have right in front of me. That's on past podcasts, but, uh, Insane. So they took, so they created this. They've been mishandling, obviously, mishandling your the money that the members give them. Those diehard members, those old men at the coffee shop that have been, that are lifetime members and will lecture you to no end that you need to go be a member of the NRA. You need to let them fight the battles for us because well, they're the only ones that can win. Back in their day. Back in their day, that was true. Okay. Not so much anymore. Things have changed. And now they're taking the money and they're giving it to these people. And now they're using $100 million of your money. It's your money. What did they spend it on? Is this a lawsuit settlement? Yeah, this is or? law. Yeah, this is. I don't know if it's settlements or what. Um, I mean, it just says ongoing legal ba- battles. That's it. They, uh, the NRA and its affiliates. Race I mean, more. don't they have attorneys on staff? <laughs> well, they're probably they're probably uh, their left leaning friends that <laughs> that they're paying. I don't know. I'm looking here. Well, I it's, don't know what a hundred million goes for. But uh, Jeffrey Epstein didn't pay out that much. Yeah. It says the NRA announced layoffs and pay cuts in late March, blaming the coronavirus crisis for these, oh, yeah, cool, for these measures. Yeah, just like a, like a bunch of other uh, big manufacturers, they're taking this time to, to 
to clean house. Yeah, and let's get that disaster money from the federal government. But I bet you the old Wayne, I bet you old Wayne is still employed. Well, he's essential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It says, while the coronavirus crisis has undoubtedly affected the organization's finances, uh, this tape of LaPierre from January indicates that many of the organization's financial cuts were underway well before the emergence of the public health crisis. And legal costs remain a heavy burden on the organization in the ongoing litigation between the NRA and Ackerman McQueen, its former public relations firm, um, uh, on on April 15th, see a brief filed by the firm on April 15th indicates its belief that the NRA has paid its outside legal counsel over $54 million Good. in the last two years. How many? Come on, man. So that's where your money and all you get is that $54 million all, in two years. All you get is that cheap, shitty hat made in China. Full of coronavirus. Full of yeah, full of coronavirus now. <laughs> so yeah, it's just absolutely insane with their fifty four. Now, what? I'm just going from memory. Wasn't that law firm tied to Wayne Lapierre? Uh huh. Yeah, he was related to him yeah. in some way. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I don't remember the exact. I'd have to find dig out old information. So they're, just, they're going for broke. Get all. Just bleed it dry. Yeah. And close up shop. So the the key is here, people. Gun owners of America. One, there's plenty of other, there's a, even a few more other associations that, that help fight for our Second Amendment rights. But Gun Owners of, the, of America is the one I'd recommend. Yeah. I mean, if, if you feel like it and you still, you still like the NRA, do both. I mean, you know, donate to both. And then if you need to separate from one, you know what I'm saying? You can separate from one. But if it makes you feel good, I know people who have done that. They still, the NRA is so ingrained in their head that they can't, pull themselves away from almost like believing what's going on or they still do good. They're so big. You know what? Pay them. I guess if you want, you got they got to pay their legal fees somehow. But they're more <laughs> of a symbol now. Right. And if membership drops, you're going to see the left attack and say, uh, look, we're winning this war. People are leaving NRA. No, no, we hadn't left the second <laughs> amendment. Right. We're just leaving the NRA. But in that way, I can see it as a symbolic, uh, want to stick with it kind of thing. Uh, but if you want a no compromise, uh, gun lobby, uh, gun owners of America, they don't give up nothing. They fight everything. Yeah. Sorry. I was playing with the board there. Nah, good, but no, good no, no. Gun owners of America is, they're fantastic. In fact, I think I was supposed to get one of them on the phone for an interview at one point. I think, yeah. We didn't I promise that. people that? I think I might've. I don't know if you were I did. committed I, to it or was just... I might have just opened my mouth like I do a lot of times, but I probably should see what I can do. I bet you I could get someone from them from them on the on with us. Yeah. Don't you think? I bet you could. Bet you I could. Especially if they find out how bad I shit talk to NRA in the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them on. Uh, they'll the very entertaining show. You won't know what's going on. The stuff that we're not hearing, can't see. They're they're in the court battles. They're still fighting the bump stock. Oh yeah. They don't give up on anything. God bless them. They will. They don't give up on anything. They're going to fight until it's completely gone. And, you know, our political class, pretty worthless. Our courts, mostly worthless. Yeah. God bless them, man. They're, they're, they're fighting an uphill battle all the way on minimal funds. They don't, they don't have NRA money. No, no, not at all. But I think what they do do is they, they, they take all the money that they do have and they, I mean, they're not putting up their guys in mansions. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're not having to fund some huge freaking, muse, you know, museum or gun archive or Nash or NRA re shooting range. I mean, they're putting their money into where honestly, where it matters the most. Right. And, uh, the NRA does lobby and does donate to politics politicians uh, most all of those turn out to betray us um the nra does one thing i hate they compromise yeah the gun owners of america they don't have the money to do that so they go in with force <laughs> and you know they just tell them hey we'll put you on blast and oh yeah try and make your life hell what do you think about that that's what needs go to the voters that's what needs to be done yeah. that's it's a grassroots it's that's i mean that's the way it should be they just got too big too fast too much freaking money yeah 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 it's well it's a it's a it's a hangout now it's a club for 
Rich uh, people. Yeah. Rich white people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sit around and um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they surrender so much. LaPierre <laughs> sounds kind of French. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's in his DNA. He can't help it. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to get into the coronavirus thing, but we're going to jump onto this bit right here. There is a um, a mayor. That's who it was, right? A mayor in Mississippi? Yep. A mayor in Mississippi. What was his name? Oh, man. Uh, well, we'll hear it in a minute, but he decided. I can't pronounce that name. Uh, L- Lumtumbo or? Chakwi. Lumumba. Lumum, Lumumba. He decided to ban during, and he and we got, the, well, you know what? I'm going to play this clip. He's- After two children were tragically shot and killed in Jackson, the youngest being a five-year-old girl, Jackson Mayor Shokwe Antar Lumumba passed an executive order on Friday prohibiting gun owners from carrying their weapons while out in public. If we are sincere in our hope for better outcomes and a brighter future for our youth, we must be moved to action. It is this call to action which has led to my decision to issue an executive order suspending the open carry law during the COVID-19 civil emergency. In this moment of great distress and economic tension, it is important that we eliminate the ability for illegal weapons to inflict irreparable harm on our city. Mayor Lumumba says he is not against the Second Amendment, which gives people the right to bear arms. However, not. he says that all rights must it's be balanced fan. by reasonable regulations. He has also started a petition to repeal Mississippi's open carry law. And Mayor Lumumba will host a... So there you go. I mean, don't let any emergency go to waste, right? Right, right. He's a, he's a big defender of the Second Amendment, though. He probably has a shotgun somewhere. But he wants to, he wants to ban... The open carry of illegal weapons. Illegal weapons. Illegal weapons. So if, if my gun is legal, I can still open carry it? No. Oh. He wants to ban all of that. He wants to ban all that. Because in these trying times of chaos and unrest, it's best that you are unarmed. Right. Okay, so don't be armed. Well, you know, we there's a there's a couple different places. One big one that comes that comes up in in my mind anyhow, um, is uh well, it was down in Louisiana, wasn't it? Well, I don't know which one. Well, you know they had they had the hurricane, right? And then take the guns. We want the guns. I told you, man, you're gonna see some crazy stuff in a state of emergency. Oh yeah, they will do anything. Well, I I saw it happen shortly after I moved to Kansas. Um, the Greensburg t- tornado came through and just okay. decimated the town. They tried to do the same thing, and and they would take guns and people would leave, like leave their houses and like come back in after the, the tornado came through and go into their houses and they found their safes like pried open and all their guns were taken all their guns were taken yeah. all their firearms were taken supposedly they were held in a safe place and they had to jump protecting them for you yeah they had we're to protecting ju- those guns for you they had to jump through hoops to get them back yeah and a lot if of them they got lost a lot of them got lost and the ones <laughs> the ones that they did get back were beat up waterlogged were just like someone had wrapped know, it around a fence post yeah absolutely insane so kansas came in and they made and I, I they passed some law that said in a state of emergency you will not take firearms we will not suspend the second amendment we will not any of this stuff yeah well the whole country's suspending the whole constitution right now so yeah so they kind of do whatever they want they but, do whatever they want i mean it was sad that a couple of kids got i don't know how they tied in it necessarily a couple of kids got killed somehow that's what he starts off the interview with and I don't know if that's because someone was open carrying or because of firearms or he just needed something to get in. To Kid had information that was going to lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, shit, they got killed. <laughs> they were suicided. Uh, no, the good mayor here, uh, there's an article in The Guardian uh, that he says, I'm not a liberal. I'm a revolutionary. Oh, my. Yeah, so. Mississippi's got revolutionaries down there. Yeah, they got a revolutionary for the mayor of Jackson. Wow. Got a good governor right now, though. Hopefully, the governor will go and uh, do something. I mean, all the we, we have a few people. And this is for the other podcast as well <laughs> that refuse to uh, violate our our constitution. God bless them. God right. bless them. We got a sheriff in uh, Sonoma County, Washington. 
I can't think of his name. Right Snohomish. Now. Okay. Snohomish County, Washington. Good grief. Get a real name, man. What is that? <laughs> anyway, uh, he refuses to uh, violate our constitutional rights. God bless this man, and this is about as good as we get these days. Right. What he's supposed to do, what he should do, is when he sees anybody else, say a police department, federal agency. Uh, Go arrest them. Yeah. Violating our civil rights. That's what you tanks for, brother. That's what you tanks for. Roll down on them. Guns drawn. You're under arrest, my friend. you coming with me. Why? Because I'm the sheriff. And that's what I'm going to do. But nobody does that. Now, see, they got a good governor right now in Mississippi. From what I know, I'm not living there. And it's not the focus of my attention. But <laughs> it seems like a, they got a good governor. The governor needs to step in and do something. Of course, almost all attorney generals are trash right <laughs> so we'll see but need to take this little mayor and arrest his ass mutumbo lum tumbo yeah lum, yeah lum, lock his ass up lum tupio or whatever yeah what is it uh chakwi lumumba 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 that's the guy i want being my uh mayor okay L- lumumba lumumba sounds like a snake yeah yeah he's got a uh, his dad He's a junior, and his dad was the senior. His dad's got an interesting uh, past as well. <laughs> wow. Uh, quite the ra- 70s radical. Anyway. Well, we've got, you've got there an article about a, a case that you found. Well, I, I find it interesting as well. Okay. I'll let you kind of go down. I don't have an audio clip for it or, any, for it or anything, so I'll let you just kind of go down and... Okay. Explain what happened here. It's kind of an interesting one to follow. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's one that I take I take interest in for a few reasons. Uh, I do not believe in the no knock warrants. Right. Uh, I do not believe. I I, I I believe if a simple reading of the Constitution uh, permits you to defend yourself even against government. Uh, <laughs> that's Kind of the whole freaking point of the damn thing, to be honest with you. Uh, this is from Amoland.com. Uh, and I need to see real fast what state this is in. Uh, Florida. Florida man. Florida man. Uh, court Always. upholds right of armed citizen to shoot a police officer in defense. Uh, let's see. This was on August 20th, 2015. Uh let me skip to a couple of important points here. Sure. Uh, they were looking, uh, they went to this guy's house. They were looking for his niece. Uh, she was having problems with um, little drugs and prostitution problems. I hate uh, it when that happens. Yeah, it, well, it happens, man. It happens. You just, you know, hey, <laughs> how did this happen? What I don't do you know. Do I just night? went to the store to get eggs. What did you do on Friday night? <laughs> uh, maybe some drugs and some prostitution. Yeah, I just went to get eggs and <laughs> somehow I got gotten some prostitution in there. And, and, Drugs. Okay, so the mom sent her to live with her brother, this okay. uncle, and this is where we were at. Uh, Brevard County agent set up a prostitution sting on August 20th, 2015, arranging to meet this Rossets, and that's the gentleman, John D. Rossett. Uh, I know I'm butchering these names. I don't care. You just go with it. Go after his niece, Mary Ellis, at a motel where a controlled environment had been set up to conduct an arrest when she didn't show kind of looks good on her part. They were going to try to catch her in a, in a sting. Uh, the three deputies in plain clothes went to her, uh, Covina street home in Port St. John where agent Peter Steed grabbed Ellis from the doorway, went to her door, knocked Knocked the door. She answered. He grabbed her and started pulling her outside. Didn't show ID. Didn't do anything. No. When she was grabbed, Ellis began screaming for help for her uncle who was in the back room eating at the time. Uh, there's strong evidence that he did not know the men accosting his niece were deputies. None of the deputies were in uniform. Uh, his statements immediately after the event and in the hospital were all consistent with the belief that unknown men were attempting to kidnap his niece from his house. Um, the first shot was when the, the Rossett, the, the, guy who owned the home yeah not the deputies the uncle fired a warning shot into the air yeah. the man who had a he's trying to scare him off 
The men who had accosted his niece, the deputies, then fired at him without identifying themselves. A firefight ensued. One deputy, John Casey Smith, was severely wounded. More than 40 shots were fired. Both John DeRossett and his niece were wounded, but less severely. The homeowner, DeRossett, was charged with three counts of attempted murder of a police officer. How can you murder? How can you attempt to murder a police officer if you don't even know they're freaking police officers? Are you kidding me? They'll, I know. they'll pull you over. When you, if your car moves a little bit, they'll jump in front of it. <laughs> He's trying to kill me, and then they'll blow your head off. Uh, and that that happens all the time, right? All the time, all the time. You'll see people watch it on video and say, "Wow, wow, he tried to kill that officer." Good grief, man! People are stupid. Uh, John DeRossi spent nearly five years in jail for defending his niece against attackers who did not identify himself as police. So what we have right now is a, the fifth circuit court has dismissed all the charges saying, eh, y'all know y'all just railroaded this guy and he spent good. five years in prison. I mean, it's not good. He spent five years in prison. It's good that he's out. So, you know, I posted, I, I didn't ask this person. I posted this on the face, my, fa- you know, Patriot Defense Facebook page. And, uh, someone said that who read it, um, and, and he said that he was on the fence about this. He has, he has problems with it. Like he was thinking maybe this guy shouldn't have fired on these people that if I tell you what, if someone knocks on my door, my daughter op- opens the door and they grab her and they start pulling her out into the, to the yard and she yells for me. I'm I'm probably gonna, that smoke. I'm coming out shooting. <laughs> I mean, if I don't know who you are, I mean, and here's a, it sounds to me like they were a little upset that they tried to set up this sting and she never showed up. All right. And they were already disgruntled. So freaking let's go to her house. If if they are allowed to do that, which I don't believe that they are, but they are allowed to do that, well, why didn't they just do that instead of setting up the sting? Do you see what I'm saying? Right. If you already had <clears throat> evidence of the crime. <clears throat> I, I, what, what was the whole controlled environment for? Right. I mean, she's at her uncle's house. Show up, full uniform, lights. Come on out. We got a, a warrant for your arrest. I mean, I hope this. I, you know, it probably won't. But I, I, I hope this guy tries to sue him for freaking oh, yeah. a ton of money. He's gonna get some. He's gonna get some money. He's gonna get if something. I'm on a jury, he's getting paid. And I'm something. not a, I'm not necessarily anti law enforcement, but you gotta announce who you are. There's enough crazy shit out there. It, that, I are mean, you kidding me? I hadn't answered the census yet because I was get, I'm getting paperwork. I'm like, I don't know who this is from. <laughs> yeah, I didn't answer there's, it anyhow. There's I, all kind of fake stuff, man. There's constant stories. You had a big shooting in Canada. The guy was running around in a police car. Yeah, yeah. Full uniform, Canadian Mountie, right? He's killing people. How many people did he kill? 12? Yeah. 12 or 16? Something like Something that. Something like that. It was a lot. He was in a police cruiser All in a town. police uniform. Yeah. Killing people. Come on, man. No, you can't trust that. Uh, they, they had several instances like that where people would uh, get police behind them. They'd call 911 say, I'm not pulling over. I'm, I'll go to the station, direct me somewhere, direct me to some people. I'm not pulling over. That's been going on for a while. Um, but you also had the same kind of incident like this shooting happened in Texas where uh, they, you know, they 2 o'clock in the morning, they no knock warrants. This guy had some marijuana. He had some marijuana. Oh, <laughs> shit, let's get him, boys. <laughs> and uh, they, they knocked his door down, come busting all up in the house. Uh, he drew down on them, fired on them. They shot him back. Uh, he was, that was in Texas and it was like, no, not guilty. Not guilty. You don't, I don't know who you are. I do yeah. not know who you are. Yeah. No, I get you. I, uh, I agree with that a hundred percent. I don't trust you if I know who you are. And if I don't know who you are, are you out of your mind? I'm just going to let some fool come up in there with a, a baklava over his face. Uh, and it, I mean, I, what the hell's going on? And 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 especially with these guys, because they were it sounds like they were all, they were on the st- uh, sting operation at one point. So they, I mean, no badges, the visible badges that we that we heard of. Right. They were in street clothes. You don't know who they are. Well, only one guy was at the door. The other two were hiding in the bushes. Oh, so that's that's <laughs> also, not sketchy his, at all. No, that's not sketchy at all. That's not. That's that's you can tell that's law enforcement. Man. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Shoot. In plain clothes? No. And the guy came out 
<clears throat> he was just going to scare them off. He fired a shot. They drew down on him, started blasting. He started shooting back. Uh, I mean, and we don't know. Completely we'll, justified. We'll what probably, would you be thinking? And we'll probably never know. Okay, we'll probably never know. But then, you know, did they did they yell law enforcement or law enforcement? I mean, did they do anything? And at that point, no, said they at, did. At that point, do you even believe them? No, absolutely. Anyone not. can. I can yell law enforcement. Well, this guy's never been arrested for anything. He's never been in trouble for anything. He was uh, taking care of his niece, supposed to protect her, look out for her. He, yeah, he's got. He's never had any problem. He had a concealed carry license. Right. Uh, he's never been arrested for anything. I, 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 I left some details because so, it was a three-page story. <laughs> uh, he hears this going on. He's going to scare them off. They start shooting at him. Well, he starts returning fire. He's like, what the hell's going on? You know, that yeah. escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you can't, you can't just do stuff like that. And maybe to a certain extent, if you think about it, I mean, if the daughter, uh, the niece was sent up there to live with her uncle, she may or may not have been causing some problems somewhere else. And maybe they, he knew that she maybe had a, you know, hung out with some unsavory people. Right. So in his mind, some unsavory, some unsavory people. At the door, man. Yeah, I'm serious. I yeah. mean, showed up at the house. He's got to protect what he thinks is his to protect. So these guys put everybody's life in danger, almost killed people. I mean, people, like, three people were shot. Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen to them? Nothing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. Not nothing, nothing, nothing. So. I tell you what, unless there's something you want to add for the gun podcast, we're going to have a short gun podcast. Okay, how short? Ooh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, and we're, we're trying. I just want to address the listeners here. We are trying. There's just not a whole lot of gun news right now. It's it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. People are angry. People are tired of this <laughs> crap. People yeah. are not listening to your silly orders, and they're walking out. Now, you got a choice. You can either pull guns on us and yeah. make us do what you want, or you can act like Americans that follow the Constitution and leave us alone. And we'll see what the people do. So, believe me, it's coming. It's oh, common. yeah. I mean, this whole shutdown, you got more suicides in Tennessee than you have yeah. um, die from COVID-19. And 75% of those are people hit by cars. Oh, Corona-19. He got, he got the Corona. Uh, it's nonsense. So, Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, you're about to see famine. You're about to see poverty. You're about to see people losing their homes, their families, everything. Desperate, angry. You're going to see alcohol sales through the roof, drugs, and overdoses, and you're going to see some pissed off people. Oh, that's it. I'm going to order that ammo as soon as we're done here. That's what I'm getting scared of. That's why I went to DEFCON 3. I'm like, I'm not worried about the virus. I'm worried about the people. I'm going to order it, and I'm going to start reloading and casting <laughs> more bullets. <laughs> you got a pretty good tub it's over a guaranteed, there. It's a guaranteed outcome. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. So. Lift it now. Maybe we'll survive it. Maybe not. It's... You, you reckon everything. But the weather's getting nice. Go, yeah, out, and, go, out, and, go out and shoot. <laughs> go shoot that ammo you're hoarding. <laughs> But, uh, no, thanks for listening. Uh, sorry they're so short. We'll be getting them longer again, I promise. Uh, we're going to um, hang in there. I'm probably going to release this one this afternoon. And we have another one that we're doing, the the uh, Prepper Conspiracy slash Conspiracy Theory the podcast. The No Name Podcast. The No Name Podcast. We haven't named it yet. Right now it's... We don't have. We don't even know what we're doing with it yet. Right now we're just ranting. And it feels good to rant. It does. So if you guys want to hear us rant, I mean, we're talking... No, I'm not, nothing's off the table. It's just whatever we feel like saying, that's that's what we say. And that'll be next. Or it's going to be on the same channel, so you'll see it pop up on your podcast app. So um, if you like it, if you like the podcast, listen to it, share it with your friends, like usual. Um, uh, if that's you wanna, a serious request. That's not just something everybody says at the end. Yeah, serious. Like, share, follow. No, share the thing. Share it. Get it out. We want our numbers to go up. Whether we, they like it or not. That's right. Do it. Exactly. We mean it. Tarver's <laughs> pissed. If you got any comments or questions, you can uh, call or text me personally. My personal number. Wow. Who, what other, let me, let me throw this out. What other podcast um, host will give out his personal number? Not me. 
Not you. Not anyone. No not one. the podcast that I listen to. You can call me. You can text message me if you want. Whatever. Area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. I will respond. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to numerous people. <laughs> I just all man, over I just, the everywhere. It, it's horrible. You know, all I can think of is New York set up a a snitch line. Oh my! God. <laughs> I will tell you that a few that a few months back, uh, you know, we people we, could send you pictures. I, I you know, remember when we remember when we threw this out here before? Uh-huh. Uh, I did have someone uh, send me a picture of their junk. Okay, it was it was clothed. It was fun. He's like, "This is my junk." <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. So anyhow, yeah. Okay. Anyhow, thanks for listening to the show. We will you get another one out. back up next week. You can find us. You reach out, please. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. And get a backup uh, because they're taking, they're taking more and more stuff down. Yeah. Twitter's banning more people. Facebook is banning more people. Uh, didn't know we elected these people to take over our first amendment, but they have, uh, everybody is, if you even talk about, uh, coronavirus or anything, this YouTube is taking down anything that doesn't agree with the world health organization. Yeah. The world just health organization has been wrong on everything. Yeah. So get, a, if you, if you like the show, find a backup source, maybe two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it could uh, I easily happen. Don't think you're going to you're going to find it coming off the pod catcher apps. I wouldn't think as for right now anyway, but the YouTube most definitely. I think you said some were flagged already. I haven't gone on to check uh, for a uh, while. Just it's just part of their program where if you Give talk a, about coronavirus, it has links to this is the truth about coronavirus from the CDC, who's also been wrong about absolutely everything. And uh, we had one about a church shooting and they had links to that. So it's they're scanning everything that goes in. And it wouldn't take much for them to ban it, especially when the CEO of YouTube says all that will be blocked. Those bastards. Yeah. So get a backup source just in case. Uh, we are on. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. And YouTube and probably many more podcast uh, apps that I don't even know what they're called. Okay. There's so many different apps on your phones that you can do podcasts on. I'm We're on a lot of them. Okay. Some of them just, what happens is I sign up for some of them and then the other, all a bunch of other apps find it and they just grab it and suck it over. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. So there you go. Uh, like it, listen to it, share it, and we will be back next week.